Hi, welcome to our introduction to how to use Mastract Nova as an anima analysis tool. This video is intended for people who have never been using MNOVA and now have to report anima data. So how do we go ahead here? If you have been running an anima, then you will receive an email from the NMR machine and there will be two emails. One will be a PDF file which you can't really analyze and the second email will contain a zip file. The zip file you need to save on your computer and then you unzip it, so you extract the file. After the extraction you will be able to open your NMR data and you can use either this button here or you can use the file and then you just select open. I have already done this one. Here you see my anima spectrum here in the center and then on the side you see also two spectra. This is a small version of my proton spectrum which you see here on the top and below you see also a carbon uh, spectrum from the same compound. It can be quite convenient because um, it's possible by this to combine a number of anima experiments in one data file. How did I get this one here? I can just click this one away. If I go to the menu view then I find something that's called pages and then you can see your spectra again. So you can click and select. For the moment we don't really need it so I'm just discard this one. Before we start let us have a look what we actually see here in the software. On the top we see the familiar menu we just used already file and view already. But if you look at all the other ones, you see there are many, 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 many options. So it will take a while until you get familiar with those. I can tell you I'm still finding new functionality. Then we have numerous of menu buttons. You can customize them and your computer may look slightly different from mine. More about those later. On the left hand side we have more menu buttons but the one we really want to look at is at the license one here. You want to see this tiny little green hook. If it has any other color please contact IT services as soon as possible. So but now we want to analyze our NMR spectrum. At the moment we don't see very much, it's tiny little. So for this purpose we familiarize ourselves with the mouse pointer. At the moment our mouse pointer looks a little bit like an ordinary arrow. Due to the capture software I won't be able to do everything but I will show you at least that the mouse pointer can change if I move down to the bottom of the NMR scale and if I go to the side it changes as well. This is something you need to try out yourself what happens when and you will get more and more proficient over time. On the X scale we have the NMR scale, the shift scale and on the right hand side the Y axis has the intensity. At the moment our NMR looks a bit empty. We don't see everything we need to and everything is too small. So the very first thing we should do is actually to zoom. But before I do this I would like to increase the intensity of my signals and I do this by scrolling my middle wheel of my mouse. You see suddenly a small fourth signal is turning up. Where is this signal coming from? This is my NMR reference. Every NMR spectrum has to be referenced and this can be done either down to an edit reference. This could be for example TMS, tetramethylsilane, which would end up at zero. Or you can also use residual non-deuterated NMR solvent. This spectrum has been run in chloroform CdCl3 but there is a small amount of CHCl3, normal ordinary chloroform and this we will use for the reference. So for this purpose we need still a slightly bigger peak. Let us zoom. Here we have on the top menu we have a zoom tool. If we click this one we have now activated You can see this activation by seeing that the icon gets a bit darker. So now I move my mouse pointer so that I include all the peaks both in terms of height and width and then I hold my left mouse button down and just drag it. So in this case I decide to go from 8 
to zero, that seems to be a good range. I would like to put the reference correct. For this purpose, I need to get this reference peak, my chloroform peak, a little bit bigger. So I'm first wheeling up my intensity. Don't worry about the funny shape of the other signals. And now I'm starting to zoom in this peak until I get a nice big peak in my spectrum. Now you can use either a shortcut. You can just press the letter L or you go to the menu Analysis and Peak Reference and select the upper reference. So you see my mouse pointer has changed completely and as soon as I touch with my mouse pointer the highest point of my chloroform peak I get this red line and then I do a left mouse click and then a new window is opening up. Here I could manually put something in but I know I'm using chloroform. I go for solvents and try to find my chloroform. Click on this one and say OK. Now the software has automatically set my spectrum to the correct value. Now I obviously would like to see my complete spectrum again. So for this purpose I'm going here to this full spectrum icon. Click on this one. And now I'm interested in the position of the different peaks. So I lower the intensity a little bit. Something like this one. And I zoom in again the area where I have my peaks. And now how do I do the peak picking? If I want to know where the chloroform signal is, I obviously have to scroll up quite a bit. The most convenient way of doing the peak picking is by dragging a threshold. However, in this case, you see that wouldn't make sense because we see a lot of kind of um, artificial peaks, some down to a, a carbon proton uh, couplings which hasn't been suppressed completely, some, some down to an imperfection of your NMR tube. So possibly we have to do our peak picking in two steps. Let us start with the chloroform signal. How do we do this? We again go to analysis and go for peak picking. And we want to do this by manual threshold. You see this little icon, you find this little icon also in the menu bar, uh, peak picking. There you see the tiny little arrow. It's important that you not accidentally hit automatic. You need to have this manual threshold. An alternative would be just to hit the letter K. How does it work? I move my mouse pointer that the top of the peak is b being above my horizontal line and I start to move my mouse pointer to the left hand side of my peak, hold down the mouse button and then I release it. If I want to do the peak picking for these super big peaks, I'm decrease the intensity so that I can get a reasonable peak picking. Repeat this for all my peaks and now I have nice peaks. Quite possibly if you look at your own numbers you will see that your numbers are tiny little so that you hardly can see anything. How can you change this one? I'm just going under the spectrum and make a right mouse click. You see that quite a number of options are turning up. I'm clicking on properties and now I'm looking for peaks. The peaks, I select the font. This is a good idea to select the font and have a decent size, not 6 or 7. You want to have 11 or 12 there and then you say OK. Also, you may not want to have so many decimals. For the chemical shift for proton NMR data, it's absolutely sufficient to have two decimals. You can either apply this one or you can just say OK. So now we have the chemical shift for all our signals. 
The next thing we want to do is to do the integration. How do we do this? We go again for analysis or we se select the integration tool from the icon bar. Again, we have to make sure that we not use the automatic routine. We need the manual routine. So now we have an integral as our mouse pointer. We don't want to integrate our NMR solvent. That doesn't make sense. We start on a signal which looks like it comes from our compound. We move again our mouse pointer to the left hand side of the signal, hold the left mouse button down and drag it over and then we release it. And we repeat this for all our signals. So it's a moment we see a ratio between our peaks. The number is nicely readable, however, it doesn't really tell us very much. So first of all, we would like to change the properties again. So for this purpose, I again go back to a different tool and click somewhere into the spectrum and go to properties. This time I go to integrals and I'm happy with the size and the font, but if you're not happy, you can change it here. And now I want to have one decimal point here. And I say, acknowledge it and I say, okay. Now you can see that the things look much neater. However, you will realize it doesn't really make sense. How can we have one and a half protons? We need to have a full number. For this purpose, we have to normalize the spectrum. How do we do this? We see that this one is set for one and we possibly want to set this one to two because if this one would be a two, then we have three and three. So I do a right mouse click, a little window opens and I click on edit integral. Here I find something that's called normalized. I set this one for two and close the window and you see automatically my spectrum gets normalized. So right now we have analyzed the spectrum. Now we would like to have a closer look into the individual signals. This signal here has the shape of a quartet. It's four needles. Forget about these small ones here. Look only at the big ones. Now I could either move my spectrum along the line. That can be quite tedious. An easier way is possibly to go for the big spectrum and then zoom in the next one. The next signal here is a singlet. And then we have one more. This one here has three peaks that form one signal. This one is something we call the triplet.